our next speaker, with more than 15 years of experience as a neonatal nurse practitioner, our next speaker is passionate about bringing this generation's healthcare providers into the digital age. She believes that technology can improve student engagement and learning, which can ultimately improve patient outcomes. Please welcome our next speaker, nurse practitioner, Dr. Patricia Thomas. about our revolutionary approach to nurse practitioner education. How many of you can relate to this young lady? <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. Actually, this image makes me nostalgic of when I was in graduate school about 100 years ago, when we used our card catalog to do literature reviews. And um, you know, it was a simpler time, and there were some good things there, like this young lady surrounded by her books, right? We had our textbooks, and we had our classroom notes, and we knew that if we studied what we were supposed to, we would know everything about the topic of interest. Let's fast forward now to today, the digital revolution, where we have vast amounts of information available to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's a good thing, mostly. Unfortunately, our students are experiencing information overload from having that kind of access because they have to weed through such huge amounts of information trying to decide which of these pieces of data are relevant, which are current, and which are accurate. And not only do students in the healthcare professions need knowledge, but they also need skills. Because if they don't develop the skills that they need while they're in graduate school, then the most fragile patients could suffer. And it's not just nursing students who need to develop skills and opportunities to apply their knowledge. It's physical therapy students, speech therapy, occupational therapy, and kinesiology. I know we have at least one kinesiology student out here. Do we have any others? Okay. It'd be easier to see if there wasn't light in my eyes. But anyway, but you can relate to what I'm saying, that you need opportunities to work with patients, and those are limited. So what we've done to help combat this problem at UTA, the College of Nursing built a simulation hospital called the Smart Hospital. If you guys haven't seen it, you need to check it out. Because this gives students the opportunity to practice their skills in a controlled environment, oftentimes before they even meet a patient. And the instructors there can develop different scenarios to meet the needs of different levels of students. For example, a beginning student learns to do a patient assessment. A more advanced student learns to start an IV and hang IV fluids. There are even opportunities for groups of students to learn things. For example, disaster preparedness and uh, getting prepared to help assist in surgery are pictured here. And even though the students tell us that they have had a great experience at the Smart Hospital, they have limited opportunities there too because of scheduling, space, and instructor availability. And this has been the impetus for us to develop our online interactive learning portal, nursingap.com, along with our colleagues at UTD, we developed this project to give our students what they really need with access to it 24-7. The students begin their journey at the dashboard. That's a UTD term for homepage. It took me a while to you know, bridge that gap. But they can go to different places in the website from here. For example, if they're studying for a test, because that's what we do, we like to be prepared don't we, students? And uh, they can go specifically to the area of interest, or they can go straight to an interactive. They can say, I'm going to clinical tomorrow and take care of a baby on a ventilator. So I need to practice ventilator management so that I can be prepared. Some students, visual learners, they can also go straight to the media library. They can view x-rays and videos on different phenomenon and experience it that way. And perhaps they're in the clinical area and they need information just in time. Then they can use the search function and pull up all the resources that are available on a particular topic. So let's take an exploration of the professor's note. This is an information repository so that the student can learn what they need to know 
about a particular topic of interest. They can use the table of contents just like they would in a textbook, what we're all familiar with. And then they can look at the resources. We have different embedded um, images such as x-rays and um, information on diagnostic tests as well as treatments for a particular disease process. At the end of each professor's note, is an annotated bibliography that points a student in the direction of the best evidence that exists for the treatment of a disease so that to help them in their information overload. Also, at the end of each professor's note, students have the ability to save and print a PDF for our kinesthetic learners and our non-digital natives. They, they appreciate that. Embedded in every professor's note is an interactive quiz or flashcards that help them test themselves. Because when you're studying at 2 a.m., your professor's really not available to answer your email if they're me. And uh, this helps you to find out what, what are your knowledge gaps so you can focus and not end up looking like the girl on the slide earlier. We have, at present, three complex interactives that we've developed and the capacity to develop many more. The first of which is my personal favorite, the virtual ventilator, where students learn blood gas interpretation and get feedback from pop-up Judy. Once they've interpreted their blood gas, they're able to go to the ventilator and make some adjustments to try to make the blood gas better. A uh, blood gas is a reflection of acid-base balance in the body. And then they can also access supplementary information, which allows them to go back and perhaps make a better choice than they did previously. When they're done with their management, they click, I'm finished, and they are rewarded with an improved blood gas, as well as rationale for the right choice from Pop-Up Judy. There's also a cardiac interactive where students can learn the difference in a, car, a heart that has a defect and hearts that are normal, the blood flow through each. They can gather information on the patient, such as what is a heart sound for a patient who has a hole in their heart, such as this one, so that they can create a plan of care for the patient and get feedback at the end on whether those were the right strategies or there's some other things they should consider. For those of you who got to hear Dr. Romero this morning, it, I think it's great news to hear that we can start to heal some nerve tissue that's been damaged. Our goal in the pain management interactive is to stop some of that damage from occurring. Back not too long ago, it was thought that premature babies didn't fully experience pain because of their immature neurologic pathways, and we've since shown that that is not the case. So we want our students to learn about nerve transmission and hopefully be able to prevent and treat the things that could negatively affect them in a pain management situation. Our crowning jewel is our virtual NICU, where students neonatal intensive care unit, which was modeled after the one at Children's, where students enter and get to play practitioner before their graduation day. A student can perform an assessment looking at the skin from head to toe to see if there are any anomalies. They can listen to heart sounds and lung sounds, as well as looking at monitoring equipment. With this assessment information, they can come together with the information in the medical record to form a, a plan of care for the patient. This particular patient is going to have some um, adjustments made to the ventilator based on his breathing pattern and his blood gas and fluids ordered for his nutrition. The student, after they finish the entire order set, will get feedback about areas they may have not completely addressed or any that they have neglected. Our program is currently under evaluation. We have students from UTA in the Neonatal Nurse Practitioner Program using it, as well as Stony Brook and New York. We are getting data capture behind the scenes to see where they're spending their time and how they're spending their time. And we're also eliciting their feedback. The, um, Initially, the feedback's good. They like the interactivity. They like that it's available to, uh, to them 24-7, and they like that there's feedback built in. I did a usability study with the first group of students who used it, and this student was looking at a process interactive about intubation, putting in a breathing tube. And in the middle of this experience, she exclaimed, wow, that's real. So it told us a lot about the fidelity and how important that was to them. So what's next for us? 
Well, we are so excited about our program that starting this fall, we're going to open it to a national audience of nurses. And we are open to the idea of incorporating other nurse practitioner programs at UTA. We hope that it could serve as a model for other healthcare provider schools, such as physical therapy and things like that, who have an element of needing to build skills and needing to practice. How many of you guys are old enough to remember this bumper sticker? Yay! <laughs> well, I think the slogan is just as appropriate to health education in the information age as it is to automobiles. And I like to think we're leading the charge to revolutionize nursing education so that our students don't fall behind and the patients get the best of care. And I hope that this talk has inspired you to do the same in your arena. Thank you.